Hey guys, George from Soundtrax here, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about dynamic braking. We're going to show you how the Tsunami 2 implements dynamic braking in a real world environment here at the wonderful Athabasca layout by the late Jim Richards. Now the way the dynamic braking works is it uses CV116 as a third braking rate to implement that works with the momentum setting set in CV3 and 4. And what this does is this will determine how long it takes the locomotive to get down to about 10 miles an hour. Because in the real world, dynamic brakes wouldn't actually stop the train, but it'll get it under control. Now with the Tsunami 2, you have two dynamic brake settings. You have dynamic brake low, which is the first press of the F4. The F4 will then trigger the prime mover to drop to idle. You can have it set to drop to notch 4 or notch 8, depending on your prototype, and we've talked about that in the past. The second press of the F4 will then trigger dynamic brake high. And this is where the third braking rate will actually implement. Then you'll hear the fans kick up, and then you'll see that third braking rate implement as the locomotives start to slow to keep that train under control as you descend a long grade. Then to get out of high, you're gonna press the F4 a third time, and then to get out of dynamic braking, you're gonna press it a fourth time. So let's take a look and see how this works on the layout.
Now, for more information on what we've just talked about, please visit our website at soundtracks.com and click on the manuals tab and check out the user's guide for the respective steam and diesel and electric versions of the decoder. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to call us at any time. Support is at extension 22, and we're an email away at support at soundtracks.com.